The town of Parkersburg, Iowa, is in shock this morning after its enormously popular high school football coach was suddenly gunned down. We want to go to Parker, Parkersburg now and CBS News correspondent Dean Reynolds with the latest. Dean, good morning. Good morning, Harry. Well, you can see behind me the flag uh, is at half staff here in Parkersburg, and it's fair to say that this town of 1800 has been traumatized by the shooting death of a man described here as a pillar of the community. They came out Wednesday night to say goodbye to their coach. He was there to make you a better man, make you a better person in life, and I just, I can't believe he's not here anymore. 58-year-old Ed Thomas was a football coach here for 37 years, but his legacy is sure to reach beyond the gridiron. Thomas helped to pull his town together after a tornado struck a year ago, killing six. The coach pushed to get the high school stadium rebuilt in time for football season, something he felt would hasten much-needed healing after the devastation, which he described to the early show's Julie Chen. I've never experienced anything like this in my life. It's probably the most two diff most difficult days that, I, that I've had. And uh, our community is mourning uh, the loss of uh, many of our friends here. With a career record of 292 wins and 84 defeats, football was his life. He was honored in 2005 as NFL High School Coach of the Year, having inspired several of his players on their way to pro ball. Now his family and the community at large are attempting to heal once again. My dad obviously has left a, a mark here. God always has a reason. At this time it's very tough for us to understand that. And hard to understand what motivated the troubled suspect, 24-year-old Mark Becker, to allegedly shoot Thomas, his former coach, in front of more than 20 students in the school's weight room Wednesday morning. And after his arrest on Sunday uh, for vandalizing a house, the suspect was taken to a local psychiatric ward for examination, but then he was released to his parents on Tuesday, and it's possible that if the police had known he was at large, this tragedy might have been averted. Harry? All right, Dean Reynolds in Parkersburg, thank you so much. Brad Meester, a former player of Thomas's, is in Jacksonville, Florida, to talk with us this morning. Uh, Coach Thomas's son, Aaron, joins us exclusively this morning as well. He's in Parkersburg, along with Police Chief Chris Luring. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Chief, let me start with you. We know now about uh, this suspect, Mark Becker, the trouble he got in, his psychiatric evaluation. Were you in the police department on alert? Did you have some sense that there was trouble be brewing with this young man? You know, to predict the, uh, the events that unfolded, that, that was not a part of the equation. Um, uh, we did arrest him Saturday nights, and uh, he was transported Sunday morning to a hospital. Um, but we had no idea that something like this would ever take place. Wow, wow. Aaron, please talk about your dad for a moment. You were so eloquent uh, yesterday afternoon as you addressed the press, but folks around the country really got to know him in these days after that uh, tornado a year ago. He talked with us on this show. He was an extraordinary man in so many ways. Right, yeah, and, and you know, I think that's the only reason I'm, I'm talking is, is through all the things that, that happened here in Parkersburg. My dad was always willing to talk and, and kind of be a spokesman for the community and, and for himself. And, uh, you know, I just hope to take from his example and, and move forward. But, you know, the biggest thing, you know, the football thing gets brought up a lot. But, but what gets overlooked, and I think the thing that our family is proud of, is his involvement in the church and the Christian man. And at this time, that's one thing that really helps us get through. We know where he is mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know, and, and from this, I guess the other reason that, that I'm willing to talk right now uh, is, is that hopefully something can get done. You know, with the young man who did shoot, uh, my father had some problems. The fact that he was released, I do know, you know, uninsured. Um, and I guess my challenge, and I hope, you know, we have a lot of government type official watching and that they'll step up and do something about this. And, and that's basically the only reason I'm on here today. Yeah. I would like to address just the idea of your father beyond football coach, uh, you probably know I went to college in Iowa. I played for Ron Skipper, who reminds me a lot of your oh, dad. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was like a father. He was like a father to the people who played for him. 
Right, my, my dad and Coach Skipper were great friends, and my, actually my uncle went and played for Coach Skipper, and uh, you know, just two great men of character, um, classic examples of what athletics and, and working with young people is all about. You know, one thing that now that I coach basketball that I've taken with me is my dad said, if I just teach you to be a good basketball player or a good football player, I've failed. Mm. You know, he really believed it was his job to make young men better, or young boys better men, and also even with the ladies and things that he had in the class, he had one rule in his classroom. Ladies, all gals be ladies, all men be gentlemen, and that'll take care of everything else, and something he truly lived by, and you know, that's what I know he wanted the kids to take from his class. Yeah. We want to get uh, uh, Brad Meester on here. Brad, you played for this extraordinary man. What did he teach you? Uh, you know, he taught me so many things, and I think he taught uh, everybody that was in that program so many things. Uh, with him, it wasn't about, you know, the X's and O's, the wins or losses. I mean, it was about uh, teaching us to be better people and, uh, you know, teaching us the value of hard work, of pride in what we do, and just the camaraderie, the friendships that we build on a team. And, uh, you know, all of us that have played for him have been able to take that and just use that in our everyday life uh, with our families. And, uh, you know, we can't say enough about him, and uh, we just thank, thank him for everything he, he's given us. You were, uh, it's an extraordinary opportunity to have the chance to play for a guy like that. Definitely. Uh, you know, he, like I said, he's, he's taught us so much. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am now without him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just it's, it's those values that he's taught me uh, yeah. that has gotten me here and has gotten all of us, you know, that, that have played for him uh, to where we are. Right. Uh, you know, it's just those, that work ethic and just that, that Christian uh, values that he taught mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the great things he, he wanted uh, was for us to be better people right. and uh, better men. And, uh, you know, right. it, was, it was wonderful. Brad, thank you so much. We do appreciate thank it. You. Chief, thank you very much. Aaron, uh, please know that there are so many people all around the country that uh, want to send their love and uh, condolences uh, to, to you and your family and everybody in the community there. Thank you. Thank you very much.